Photography Daily. Hello and welcome. Street photography saved my life. It sounds very dramatic, but as you'll hear in the show today, it was a pastime that's become a change of occupation for former Canadian paramedic Ian McDonald, who believes shooting street really was the change of direction his mind drastically required. Uh, I would put podcasts on and I would start walking and it would be hours into it that I would realise... I feel good. Put those two words, street and photography, into a search and you're, you're spoiled for choice at where to look, how and who you can be inspired by. I'm going to take two extremes now, Gildan and Bresson. Henri Cartier-Bresson, the French humanist photographer, the architect or the pioneer for many in candid street photography, he coined the decisive moment concept, gentle in spirit and artist with paint on a canvas as, as well as photography. Bruce Gildan, well... Bruce talks of living a different life. He talks openly about almost dying from a drugs overdose. His father was a gangster. His mother, an alcoholic, committed suicide. He talks of investing his guts in the pictures. And both have an authenticity that can't be denied. They're purists, captains of their own very different teams in terms of approach. Today, what is street photography? The second in the two-parter with Nick Turpin, who has breathed new life into the In Public project building on, quote, its history as a platform for the most interesting and innovative documentary photography from the public realm. Um, I've tried to, you know, personally have a very broad definition of it. I think the word itself that we inherited, street photography, I don't think it serves us as well as a description. I took a dip into the emails that you've been sending in to see if there were a few words about street to take into today's show. There were two in particular, Kean Pritchard, who shoots street in Dublin as a pastime alongside his work as a bus mechanic. Great to hear Nick Turpin on last week's show and looking forward to part two. We won't have to wait too much longer. I too am a street shooter, though only mainly at weekends. And my work in various bus depots in Ireland and in Scotland is a story in itself. For me, street photography is about the unexpected. But it can also be very drab, a simple record of life that one day will hold more value than today due to its fascinating nature of its normality. Lincoln Braxford, I was a listener to your Breathe Pictures podcast before it changed names to this, and so far, so good. I'm pleased to hear it, Lincoln. Can I throw a name in for consideration as a guest? Yann Adel is a street photographer who just decided to go on an 80-week round-the-world trip, and in doing so, began a love affair with working on the street. He now lives in Argentina. His work is uncluttered, simple in construct, and the colours of his life and photography for me just hop. Recommend his work to anybody. And so with those words registered for you to go and do some research, before we get to Nick Turpin, I wanted to introduce you to another guest, really, a photographer interviewed last year who I've got a feeling we'll talk to some more in the very near future. I've heard it mooted a number of times how street photography can be a great leveller for the mind. I've not considered street photography cathartic or even meditative, but it seems, for some, it is. Former paramedic, now photographer Ian MacDonald, found that street photography helped him treat and overcome PTSD in a very frank discussion about the condition. You know, I was a paramedic for 20 years, and I've always been an artist at the same time. Uh, A musician, I did web design for a long time, um, and then I got into the visual arts and writing. And so a few years ago... What turned out to be PTSD um, came to a head. Uh, And as you can imagine, it disrupted my life completely, um, my family's life, my health, my wellness. And so, of course, you go through all the the things you would think a paramedic goes through when they're trying to heal from PTSD. They they take time away from work. Mm. They go through counseling and everything else. But for me... Uh, I was very lucky that I also had photography and and music for that matter, uh, because the arts, um, they gave me something joyful in my life. They gave me something productive in my life to focus on at a time when honestly, just getting out of bed was a struggle. And having a camera was one of the few times that the demons weren't knocking at the door to be, I guess, sadly dramatic about it for a second Um, you know if you if you think about mindfulness practice and you think about when are you not thinking about the bills and when are you not thinking about income tax and for you when are you not thinking about brexit um (laughs) the camera was that time for me when i was out making pictures i wasn't sick I, i wasn't thinking about being sick i wasn't thinking about my future or my family's future i was thinking about making photographs and so it became a huge part 
of my recovery. Paramedics have one of the highest rates of mental health problems, don't they? And suicide, yeah. Mm. I mean, if we were to go chronologically, there were little signs for years building up. Uh, you know, I, 20 years as a paramedic, 15,000 ambulance responses. Wow. There were a lot of things that, that we know now PTSD is not necessarily just one specific event. It can be, but much more it is um, a cumulative effect. Uh, and you see that with a lot of soldiers and, and people that worked in my industry. And so if we look back in hindsight, we can see years of building up of me becoming angry mm -hmm. and frustrated and intolerant all the time. And no one pinned it to, oh, Ian has PTSD. Yeah. Um, I'm sure some people just thought, if I can say this on your podcast, Ian was an asshole, right? Mm. Um, We've had worse. But yeah, but the reality is those were the signs of, of cracks appearing in the dam. And then what happened is that it came to a head. Uh, it broke into panic attacks. It broke into insomnia. It broke into nightmares. And that's when I started uh, seeing a, a counsellor. And the moment that camera came out, did, did you know that, that there was a relationship forming that was rather unique? Yeah, I did. I, I can think of times where I would force myself to drive into the city to shoot street, for example. Yeah. And uh, at the time, uh, I would be incredibly anxious, uh, nervous of, of driving into the city. And that in itself was a very weird thing for me because I've always been the classic type A personality, which I think most people that worked in my industry are. I thought nothing of managing a scene with, you know, multiple gunshot patients. Mm. I... I was a musician that performed on stage in front of hundreds, if not a thousand people for one show that I played. And so being anxious or nervous about just driving into Vancouver to take a few pictures for an hour was a very weird ego uh, destroying experience. Very strange, I would have thought. Right. But what was interesting was that I would park the car, I would walk out into the streets, I would sling my X100 over my shoulder, uh, I would put podcasts on, and I would start walking. And it would be hours into it that I would realize I feel good. Ian McDonald will return with his story in longer form over the coming weeks. If you, by the way, have a story to share about your own experiences of mental health that's been positively affected by photography, street or otherwise, I'd like to hear from you. Email studio at photographydaily.show. That's studio at photographydaily.show. Now, last week on Wednesday's show, episode 15, we talked to Nick Turpin in the first of a two-parter about street photography ahead of the relaunch of In Public, which we'll link to in the show notes. It's, of course, live now. In Public's place in street shooting has been the result of two decades of work by founder Nick Turpin to pull together the very best contributors to form a unique and special collective. So he's perfectly placed to answer a question of what the title street photographer means. There are many different suggestions of what street photography is. Some people say it's the work of photographers like Fan Ho, beautiful shadow play, but devoid of story. And some some people uh, will obviously only credit the likes of Cartier-Bresson, people like that, as contenders to be considered true street. There's almost a snobbery, isn't there, in some circles? You know, this what I say is, is what it is kind of approach, and everything else isn't street photography. But it, it really has morphed of late, hasn't it? Yes, I guess so. Um, I mean, I, you know, I get accused, I know I do, of sort of saying or being quite vociferous about what I think street photography is. Um, I've tried to, you know, personally have a very broad definition of it. I think the word itself that we inherited, street photography, I don't think it serves us as well as a description. You know, it doesn't really describe what we do. Um, so, you know, for the last few years, I've used this phrase, candid public photography, which I think is the broadest, you know, that, that, that sort of encompasses uh, pretty much everything that most people are doing, like the one that, like the, the, the people you described, for example. Mm. You know, I mean, it's difficult to say within public, I've tried to bring together people who are, I don't know, experimenting, uh, pushing those boundaries, I suppose. Um, I mean, a couple of years ago, I was the art director of Street London, a festival in London. And the theme that I chose was the borders of street photography, because yeah. that, that, that very question about where street photography ends and where other forms of photography begin, you know, when does street photography become photojournalism? When does it become art photography? When does it become conceptual photography? You know, that's that's actually a very interesting question. And I think even if we don't come up with a definite definitive answer, I think having that question, having that discussion, discussion, having that debate um, helps all of us to to think about our own work. Um, so that's you know what I'm interested in. Snobbery, maybe I don't. You know, it's a difficult one. 
Um, I think some people like myself who've been doing this, in this is my 31st year as a professional photographer, and I've been doing street photography just a little bit longer than that, I think. Um, and I guess we've seen a lot of things come and go in that time. And so I have quite a strong sense of what, what is good street photography and, and, and what is quite, uh, I guess, derivative street photography. You know, I mean, it, there's a lot of photography out there. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, these templates, there's, there's a certain kind of number of templates of street photography, which a lot of people fall into. And uh, I've been quite careful to choose photographers for the new in public, which, which I don't consider really, yeah. really fall into those templates. Well, we can't really talk about street without discussing COVID-19. I, I was looking up photography during pandemics and I, I found a really interesting article in, in Apollo magazine, which I'll link to actually. As, as long as photography has been around, Nick, it's been, a, it's been a witness to the various plagues and pandemics we've had. And a few I didn't even know we'd had. So... So how is that? I know you work as a, as a, you have a commercial life as well, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to broadly speak about street photography here, really. How, how has it affected you and, and your work and what you've been able to do and what you've wanted to do? Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's curtailed a lot of uh, a lot of the street photography which I would normally be doing. Uh, you know, I was in the middle of a project when when this started, and I just had to shelve it. So working, I, I do work for a London organisation, Transport for London, and that has a, that's given me an excuse, a reason to to use public transport and go into the city, shoot for them, and, and maybe make a few pictures for myself. You know, while I'm there, but generally it's it's quite difficult. You, if you go into the city now, it's extremely quiet. Um, there's very little going on, mm. and I know a lot of photographers have been out photographing empty streets. That you know, that wasn't really something that appealed to me. I, I'm not that sort of photographer, I don't think. So yes, it's been very difficult. Uh, I've seen a few, a few images from people, you know, street photographers who've taken different approaches. Uh, Nick Han, for example, who I mentioned earlier, he's just shot a project, um, you know, about his own home life, like a home diary. Yeah. Um, and the pictures, that, you know, they're like, he makes every, everything look like a fabulous street photograph. <laughs> Even his daughter's cleaning the windows of the house, you know, is, is beautifully done. Mm. And so he's just he's just published those, you know, super quickly, shot it and published it in, in like three months. Um, so lots of people are, I guess, having to find different ways of, you know, using their skills under the pandemic. In, in general terms, COVID or no, no COVID, we've got this enormous democratisation of photography now and, and citizen um at work whether I'm, I'm i'm sort of being tentative and not calling it street now i want to call it candid um <laughs> i mean devour instagram for a morning and you'd be left thinking that street photography is the only photography sometimes how, how has that helped with what i'm going to tentatively call street work or candid work as as an industry because it is now an industry isn't it yeah i mean in terms of uh you know publishing and workshops and um, I don't know podcasts and all sorts of things. Uh, street photography has become very central. I mean, it's it's practiced by so many people, and you know, as you say, it's it's a very democratizing art form. A cheap camera, and uh, and you can you have a worldwide audience yeah. at your feet through Instagram or, or these image image sharing sites, um, which I think is a fantastic thing. But I don't think it means that there are more necessarily more great photographers out there. Uh, and I think that's part of the problem. I think perhaps street photography has become, was in danger of becoming a slightly cliched form because because there isn't enough uh, sort of individual artistry going on. There's a lot of, you know, all that, I, I like the way you did that. What LUT did you use? You know, I could make yes. my picture look like yours if I used the same uh, sort of colour filter and yeah. so on. And I guess it's that which I find is, is sort of killing it a little bit. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the Instagram street photography I see is very, very similar. And, um, you know, I think that's something that's very much what I wanted to address with this new this new launch of the group. And it, it's obviously something that wasn't the case 20 years ago with the first in public. Yeah. That had a different remit, you know. But you'll have your own workshops as well. I know. I know it's a link on your uh, on your website, on the new website. So um, that'll be an yes. ex exciting opportunity, obviously, for for people to meet with uh, those that are in the the new in public. Um, will, will, will all be tutoring or mentoring in that, or is it mainly you? Or well, I personally have had to cancel five workshops this year. Yes, um, which is a shame. That's yeah. that's you know, or I say back cancels, or postpone or whatever. Um, and some, you know, some street photographers are very good at teaching and some aren't, I think. Um, so certainly among the group, I think um, myself, I think perhaps Nathan Devere, Nick Han, probably Troy, um, 
you know, are very good at uh, teaching and doing workshops. And we actually have some other photographers lined up to join in public in the in the days after the launch, actually, who also, uh, uh, you know, well known for doing fantastic workshops. So, you know, watch this, watch this space for that. It's going to be a growing, the, growing the, thing. The archive features some very familiar names as well, including one of my favourites, Trent Park. You've mentioned him already as, as we've been talking during this interview. How did you select that archive? I mean, I know you were, a, uh, Trent Park was part of it originally, wasn't he? Well, the archive basically exists on the new site just to preserve the links so those are the same links that were on the original in public site and because the group was around for so long you know there's so many interviews were done with all of these photographers they appear on different magazines and you know youtube videos and all sorts of things and in published books you know in public is mentioned in street photography now and and bystander and all these sort of books and surveys of the street photography scene um, I didn't want those photographers all to disappear. So that's why the archive remains yeah. as a tab on the end of that. And, and, you know, I think it's a fantastic resource. I, th- I hope that everybody benefits, all the photographers who are, who are mentioned there, from us keeping that. Just finally, and it, might, it might be a bit of a, a, a left field, um, a left turn at the traffic lights, but what, what are your thoughts on the attacks happening for, to photographers showing, showing the news right now, mainly in America, as the press haven't been quite so openly abused in other parts of the world? But I, I'm talking in general about photography and the, the stories being told, they, they don't just come from press shooters. I mean, these these will be those out on the street making stories and photographing the landscape of what's going on. Yeah, certainly we're seeing more than just accredited press representatives out there, you know, photographing, well, the pandemic, but also, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement. And, you know, some, some of the best images I'm seeing are coming from street photographers. Yeah. Um, you know, you could argue perhaps they should be at home sheltering, but I think, you know, I think it, I think they're doing a great job in creating, a, you know, a record of, of what's happening in these different cities. The attacks on them are regrettable. Mm. I think, you know, I've seen a few uh, in the press, uh, different examples. I, I don't think, you know, some of them have been by the police, some of them have been by the, by the protesters, and that's quite an unusual situation, which I've not really seen echoed before. So it's, I think it's worrying if photographers are seen as, you know, a uh, sort of agent of the of the law in some way, that their pictures will be used as evidence subsequently. Um, I mean, one of the most important things we do is record what happens in a public space. The yes. fact that, you know, what happens in a public space must be a matter of public record in, in a democratic country is an extremely important principle. So, you know, I hope we, we will not see that uh, growing as a problem as this goes on. Well, let's end on a positive note. Uh, I, I was so pleased when I heard that you were launching this again. It was coming back. Um, you must be quite excited, Nick. I am excited. Yeah, I get a lot of pleasure from you know, inviting people to be part of something and um you know just putting these pictures together these portfolios together uh, and making new friends dealing with the photographers uh it's one of the it's one of the nicest things of being being part of a group like this and the, old, the, the previous incarnation of in public you know we were all we were all really good friends and stayed at each other's homes you know as i was in new york i would stay with richard and so on um and that kind of thing that's all very very nice and i'm, I'm looking forward to having some of these guys who i've not met like like nathan and and nick or rob or whatever you know come and stay in my spare room in london and for us to go out shooting together all those kind of things are just as nice as you know presenting and talking about what the theory of street photography what it means and all that kind of thing so there's lots of nice aspects to to running one of these these sort of groups my thanks again to nick turpin for taking part in the show Keep sending in your emails, following what you hear, what photography means to you, anything interesting that you've uh, got assignments-wise, anything that you've heard on the show that you'd like to comment on, send them to studio at photographydaily.show. Make sure you visit the website because the links are there. Also, there's news of upcoming specials. If you've been enjoying the shows, those podcast player reviews are great, and thank you for leaving them. Really appreciate that. Music on the show today from artlist.io, and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you tomorrow. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.